Let's go. Major one is in the books for the CDL. And today we are going over a trio of fives. We've got five insane stats, five best plays, and five huge takeaways. And we're going to be going through it all. So without further ado, guys, I am very excited to talk some Call of Duty today. So let's get into it. Let's go. First of all, I've got to ask, do you like Call of Duty? Because if you do, I know you're gonna love today's sponsor of the video, Draft Buff. It's like fantasy football, but for Call of Duty, you've probably heard this spiel from me before, but it really is a blast. And you can join the community Draft Royale, which is like DFS, you have a budget, you pick the, the COD pros you want in your lineup, and you can compete against myself and against the community in the community Draft Royale. It wasn't the best of results for me this past week, but I guarantee you, you ain't beating me next week and it's still not too late to create a league and play against your friends as well you can do season long leagues and you can start up a league at any point even during the season now and play through the rest of the year so and overall fantasy sports is just a blast i highly recommend checking out draft buff clicking the link down in the description or down in the pinned comment to join the community draft royale and compete against myself and the rest of the community without further ado let's get right into this video and talk some call of duty let's go the real question is where do we begin so how this is going to go down is we're gonna go through the fives, the fours, the threes, and onwards. So we're gonna start with the number five of the most shocking stats, the best plays, and the first of the five takeaways. And we're kind of gonna rock through down to the most important ones at the end. So let's finally get into these number five. Number five. Takeaway number five, or number one, if you wanna look at it like that, is that the New York subliners are for real. Obviously, if you watch this weekend, you probably have that same takeaway as well. We're starting off with the obvious ones, and it gets crazier as we go. But the, at the end of the day, this roster, Asim, Mac, Diamond Con, Clay, they have overcome all odds. And where we thought this team was a few weeks ago, where like, you know, I had them 10th in like power rankings. And now, you know, they're a top four team right now. Like what? They finished third at this event. It'll be an interesting debate on the podcast tomorrow about where they stand in power rankings and how we want to work with that. But there is so much with this team that's extremely interesting. And they went on a run after getting 3-0'd by Optic Gaming in that first round of the winner's side. They went down the loser's bracket and went on a tear, beating Florida 3-2, LA Gorillas 3-1, and then getting the full-on revenge and 3-0'ing Optic Gaming in the loser's semis. And then the run finally came to an end against Dallas Empire. They got 3-0'd by Dallas in the loser's finals. But that is nothing to be ashamed of for the squad that had basically two months less of practice than most of these other teams. And they looked awesome, man. At different moments, all four of them had their time to shine. And moving forward, I think this team is for real. I think they might be here to stay for a while now as a contender in Call of Duty and things you love to see from Dallas. We'll talk a lot more about them. This will be a theme, but we'll be talking a lot more about them on the podcast tomorrow as well. My goodness, New York's insane. So shocking stat number five, the London Royal Ravens won two maps against the Toronto Ultra with only having 15 minutes of practice with their new roster. Alex couldn't play this weekend because of personal reasons and Zed had to fill in for Alex this weekend and they took two maps off of the Ultra without having any practice, the last second substitution. And so the series went to a game five on Moscow where London lost 6-4. So it was very winnable for London. Tough stuff for Parasite and the crew showed up. It did expose a few issues that Toronto still has when it comes to respawn. London has nothing to be ashamed of about that. And that's just a crazy, crazy stat with only the 15 minutes to prepare. That's wild. So that is crazy. But now we're on to our best play number five, which is our city's three piece on Moscow. Let's check it out. Yeah, kind of the lethals from either team kind of back both squads down. It's a fast rotation over. So now the pressure really going to fall to our cities. He's ready and waiting, gets the kill, gets away with his life. And someone other than Apathy or Abizi finally on the stat line from a first blood standpoint. We've already seen Gorillas pull off one 3v4. What Can they do it R again? Cities. No, it's our cities. Now with three beam after beam looking for the final player in Assault is Big Alec. Locks it down. This is for the ace, but Assault says not now. Not on my watch. The ace won't come in, but Assault still lots of work to do. Would have loved to found that pick. And now here comes the rest of Atlanta phase trying to take him down, and they do. Yes, sir. Atlanta had some insane moments this whole weekend, obviously, and a lot of learn from the pros moments. And that was an awesome SD. Just whole sequence from Atlanta there. And RCs was topping it off, playing some awesome SD on that B side of Moscow. Things you love to see. Number four. 
Alrighty, number four, the fourth or the second takeaway is that Simp is the best player in the game. Who would have thought? I mean, at the end of the day, we knew going into this weekend that Simp was a top three player. We knew Hook was right there with them and a few other guys were all in the mix. I think this weekend, we have a pretty solid top three-ish players in the league right now, which again, a tier ranking of the, of the pros is coming here again very soon. So keep your eyes out for that one. But basically, I think Simp's the best player in the league. Hook is probably the second best player and Dashy is right there as well. I mean, Simp was insane this weekend, which that leads straight into our fourth most shocking stat, which is it's Simp. And it's Simp in all stats because right now, so right now inside of Hardpoint, he is 0.02 KD behind number one. He's currently tied for number five, basically. It's a little, a little bit weird. Inside of Hardpoint, he has the most damage per death out of anyone in Hardpoint. And that's all while he has over 32% of his team's hill time inside of Hardpoint. Then you go over to SND, and Simp has the highest KD in SND on the season right now, a 1.46 KD on the season, which is insane. And then you head over to Control, and Simp has the highest KD and the most damage per death inside of Control as well. He is doing it all for phase in all three game modes. And shocker, Simp is a really, really, really good Call of Duty player. He has been since the second he stepped in to the league in Black Ops 4, and he has not looked back. He might be playing some of the best Kai of his career right now, and that is saying something for how good he's been in the past. So besides Simp, now for our fourth best play of the weekend, it goes to Skies, a 12 streak versus Seattle. Let's check it out. A heads up play from Slacks. Great work. Again, looking at that mini map, we know where they're coming from. These players do not. It's educated guesses all round. But these boys have done their homework. A great start here from Skies. Come on, dude. Kill number four. Chalum, you're at 58 HP. Just chalum. Just do it. Just do it. Invest in your game. There's another kill on a loony. He got it. He got it. Push now from Seattle as they get closer and closer towards the hard point. But you have to get through Skies. You have to get through Skies! Oh my god! What in the f is this? Say, what is this? I'm done. I'm done. He's a maniac. His name is Caesar Skies Bueno, and he chose to invest in his game. The best investment you could ever ten. make as a player. There's 10. Go for the nuke. Why not? Get you your little nuclear calling card. Earn it in a pro match. Give him a bit more flavor. And look at the, the team player getting trophies in the hill, getting the kills as well. Give it to him, Pristini. There's number no! 11. Slack. He gets it before he gets shut down. Crazy, man. I know Octane was talking about that they were having some controller issues with Pristini during that like sequence, which is, might have been why Skies was going on that 12 spree or whatever, but either way, very impressive from Skies, and it was some nasty Call of Duty as a whole. Let's go on to number three. Number three. All righty, here we are. Don't underestimate LAG, all right? I it was caught victim underestimating LAG as a whole. This roster, I just didn't know exactly what they could do or how this team would play out inside of Respawn especially, but man, they really played some good Call of Duty this weekend, even though all the results weren't necessarily there for them. They kicked it off with a really impressive 3-0 versus LA Thieves, which sent them on to play Atlanta Phase, where they got 3-0'd. Don't get caught sleeping because they got 3-0'd by Atlanta Phase. First of all, it's Atlanta Phase. Secondly, if you look at that game and how they played, those matches were very, very close. And there were so many moments there that LAG played some really great Call of Duty, and they are just a few gunfights away from flipping that game on its head. And so overall, I was really impressed with LAG in that series. And then they went on to play New York in the loser's bracket. And we all thought, wow, that's kind of tough. They lost, you know, 3-1 to New York. Not an ideal situation there. New York just barely edged out versus Mutineers. But then New York was on to beat Optic 3-0. And you're like, oh, wow, okay. New York had something a little bit different going on there. And they were playing some really, really good Call of Duty. So for LAG to, you know, keep that series close, you know, really isn't that bad of a loss. Overall, that roster is really interesting. Silly, Apathy, Assault, and Vivid. And in the long term, I'm not totally sold on their upside, but they are going to be a very competitive team throughout the season against basically every team they play. So for the third shocking stat, Seattle is now 0-6 in control matches. That's tough. Things you truly hate to see there and definitely a shocking stat to say the least. I mean... I think Seattle has a lot of potential when it comes to control still. They have, they've just made some bad mistakes. I think this will come with time as those guys are all really analytical and how they approach the game. And 
I think it'll start clicking for them eventually, but it's a tough start so far for Seattle in the control category. And we're looking for them to finally get their first control win here sooner than later. Alrighty, for the third best moment in play of the weekend, it's gotta go to Dallas Empire and Hook clutching up in a round 11 against Optic Gaming. Optic fans, look away, this hurts. Let's check it out. Beating that one-on-one -on -one between him and Illy on the top side of the map. Envoy able to win it. Formal's gonna go down. Three versus three. 30 seconds to go. And Hook is just lurking. Did Hook find it? Oh, great timing. Oh, he might just get right in behind. No way. He might get right in behind. Everything might fall apart here for Optic. It's Hook. Of course it's Hook. One more drops for Optic. Hook can't finish the second, though. Two versus two. And they line up Shotzi and Krim. They get the kills. They get the defuse. They take the round 11 in Empire. They move on. That's tough, man. That timing was insane, but Hook was playing a crazy, crazy map as a whole, getting first blood and, and just clutching up over and over again. He had an awesome map and an awesome series as a whole. Hook has been playing some insane COD and that was capped off right there. Number two. My goodness, Optic Gaming is so close, but so far, man. You know, they look so good early on with their win against New York. And then you head into a game against Dallas and it was just the smallest things they could have gone on to play against FaZe in a winner's final, but instead they get knocked down to the loser's bracket, end up facing against New York again, and lo and behold, things just collapse for OpTic. Whether it was they got ahead of themselves, they underestimated New York, everything came together for New York and it all collapsed for OpTic. And at moments, they look incredible. They look unstoppable. They look literally untouchable at moments. And the s &D is still definitely a big question mark for OpTic at points against certain teams. And there's just a lot of inconsistencies in their gameplay. There were some moments on Garrison there against New York where you're like, what is OpTic doing? This is horrible. And it was some tough cod at points for OpTic. Again, man, they have so much potential. We know that. We know how good they can be. And I'm sure they will be down the road here. But they still got some tweaking, some practice to do before it really comes together for them. And it still feels like a few weeks away for OpTic before they can be that a solidified, locked and loaded top two, top three team. Alrighty, shocking stat number two, Awakening is insane in Search and Destroy. Right now, he has an 81.48 first blood win percentage. That is insane. So when he's in the first gunfight of an SND round, he wins that gunfight 81.48% of the time, which is way higher than anybody else in the CDL. The next highest is Dashy at 75%. And then the next highest after that is in the high 60%. So there are some crazy outliers there. Not only that, Awakening has a 1.37 KD as a whole, and he's averaging 8.69 kills per nine rounds in s &D, which is insane. So overall, Awakening has been an X factor for Florida, but Florida has a lot of problems of their own to still iron out here before they can really be a top, you know, five, six team at the moment right now. So speaking of Florida, the second best play of this whole weekend goes to Neptune in a 1v3 ace against Seattle. Check it out. Got me, Looney with a bait, makes his way forward. Looney gets the second as well. We don't need no help. Unbelievable. Neptune from behind now, making his way forward. It's going to be two for Neptune as well. And just like that, it's a 1v2 with a bomb down. What a flurry of action. He saw it. Been grinding. Grinding search for moments like this. You got to let him work. Make the plays. He's got some time. Looney obviously knows where he's at. And you can see Pristini just watching the cross, but he's, he's able to get in the plane. Still an opportunity for the clutch. Do you know the timing could be great? Makes a lot of noise, though. Looney might peek this. He's feeling himself there. The shoulders. Throws the shoulders. Throws the shots. Neptune finally gets the kill. It's a 1v1. 12 seconds on the clock. Neptune's going to be straight in the bomb. The tag's going to land through. Pristini on the slide. Oh, wait a minute. He got it. He got it. Neptune. Neptune. Got no, it. he did it. Let's go. Yeah. Wait, did he? Wait. Oh, Bang. my word. Neptune, what a round. My word. What in the world, man? Neptune went crazy. I lost my mind in that moment. I might upload like a reaction video of some of the crazy moments of the weekend or something like that because I was doing some watch parties and it was insane, but just absolute insanity there. Let's head on to our number ones. Let's go. Number one. Alrighty, it's as simple as this. Atlanta FaZe is the best team in Call of Duty and it's not close. All right, 
This is going to lead into basically our most shocking stat of the whole weekend. Atlanta FaZe went undefeated in stage one. No one beat them. They were 8-0 as a whole, winning the championship. But not only that, inside of the tournament itself, they went on a nine-map winning streak. And it ended finally in the finals against Dallas. But as a whole, they were 11-2 in the tournament in map count, which is just unbelievable. And it, it truly is the, some of the best COD we've seen. I mean, we, they probably put on the best control performance of the whole year during this tournament. So it'll be really, really fun to see what this looks like when FaZe and Optic face off again here in the future. But my word, Atlanta FaZe is on a whole nother level of Call of Duty right now. And now every single team is gunning for the top, gunning for Atlanta, and how to figure out how to stop these guys on the map. They are unreal. So with that said, we're going to our number one play of the whole weekend. This was insane. This is Temp and Slasher clutching up a 2v7 in control. Oh my word. Let's check it out. They make their way back in the series. It's really about these picks. How do the way that Thieves look to play it? They're starting to drop like flies. Slasher and Temp, the last two players up. Slasher finds the pick, and it's Temp from the other side who also is able oh, to find point. one. Four seconds left. They got to get on the point. They got to get there in time. Slasher and Temp gonna play this one correctly. No response for the other end. Oh. Temp is able to find a big one. Can anybody get to the hill? Cammy has to get there, and he does. Cammy with point A on the clock, and Slasher is there to seal the deal. Yo, Toronto can't be doing that, man. This is what they can't be doing. I had so much faith in Toronto heading into this year, and I really, really liked their chances, and I really, really like this team as a whole. I mean, Kleenex and Cammy are two of the most exciting players in the CDL, but bro, you can't let Temp and Slasher do that to you, bro. Oh my word, it was insane. And uh, definitely deserving of the number one play of the whole weekend, of course. So the last two things here, the matches you gotta go watch. Of course, if you haven't already, you gotta go check out the Optic versus Empire match. I mean, insane. Came down to game five, round 11. And there were so many awesome moments. The control was awesome in that series as well. And then of course, the Florida versus Subliner series was also lit. Gotta go check that one out. Definitely, if you're gonna watch two matches of this weekend, watch those two, they were awesome. And then of course, last but definitely not least, is the blunder of the weekend, the had bad of the weekend, the down bad of the weekend. And guys, I mean, this has to go to crib. This is so funny, check it out. Diamond Con's gonna find another. Illy versus Asim, the trades come through. It's gonna be Clay, it's a 2v2, 10 seconds on the clock. Dallas are gonna make a play right now. Someone's gonna go for it, but Hook lying in wait on position, makes it a 2v1. Now Clay to keep the boys in the tournament, 1v1 against his teammate, Krim. Oh my word, he's gonna hold this one. He has to capture the whole B zone alone. The clock has stopped. Krim, Krim has so much time to work with. He's making the plane play. Looking out for Clay. Here comes Krim up over the top. Clay guns him and stays alive. <laughs> Yo, I love that Krim tried to chow that. It was like reminiscent of this clip. I don't know if you saw it on Twitter of him chowing back in Black Ops 2. And uh, man, it was just hilarious. Obviously, Dallas goes on to win that anyway. And Krim was like, yo, hold my ball sack. Like, bro, this is it right here. But it was an awesome moment. It gave me a laugh and I loved it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Shout out Draft Buff, of course, for supporting. And definitely click the link down in the description to join the Draft Royale competing against myself and the community this weekend in some fantasy Call of Duty. And of course, the podcast is out tomorrow. A tier rankings video for all the pros is out later this week as well. So be on the lookout. But as always, guys, I'm your boy, Salvation Lee. I hope you guys enjoyed some Call of Duty this weekend. And as always, we'll see you next time. I'm out.